Hello, and welcome to the Penn State Extension Dairy Cash Flow Planning Sheet. Today we are going to teach you how to include all of the information you will need to plan your 2014 cash flow. We are going to start with the farm information that will be included in your cash flow plan. You will need Microsoft Excel 2007 or higher to run this Excel spreadsheet. You will see that there are a number of tabs here included at the top of the Excel sheet to help you navigate through the program. The general tab includes your farm information as well as a notes page for any calculations. It also has all of the print information that you could want to help you print your final plan. If you have any questions about references, we have also included the Penn State Dairy and Whole Farm Summary Plans as well as the information on the crop costs for various Pennsylvania crops. We will begin by entering our farm information. Here we are going to work off a case farm. You will enter all of the contact information for your enterprise. You can see that you only need to enter the zip code in order to have all of the information brought up for your city, state, and county. If you are working with a Penn State Extension educator, you will also include their information under the person submitting the form. We will then start by moving on to the rations tab of the program. We will click on Herd Ration Entry to begin our work. We are going to start by entering all of the ration information for our dairy right here on this page and then we will move on to determining the crop cost section for the program. Adjust the screen so that it fits your computer. We want to look up the information on market costs so we will choose the most current month that we are working with. We also want to enter how our rations are prepared. We are going to enter all of our ration information on a per head basis. However, you could also enter them on a daily batch weight as well. We also want to choose our lactating feeding style, whether it's TMR, component fed, or grazing. And then we are going to start by entering our rations. If you are working on a primarily grazing operation or a farm that changes their rations significantly throughout the year, there is an option for you to enter partial year rations under the partial year ration entry. Here, you would select a group of animals, name that group, the number of animals in each group, for example 100, and the estimated days on the ration. If you are splitting it down the middle, roughly half a year on one and half a year on another, you include the number of days on each ration as thus. Then you will enter the different ration types, the forages, as well as the home raised concentrates and any of the other ration ingredients and the amount fed to each group. Once you have inc included all of this information, you will copy that information back to the annual ration sheet. The program will prompt you to make sure that you are ready to do this as it will erase all current data in your ration and crop spreadsheet. Make sure you are comfortable with this before you click yes. As is an example, we will click No to continue on the annual ration page. Here we are going to start by entering in what the group names are for our milking cows and our dry cows. In this example, we only have one ration that will be fed to our lactating cow group. There are 75 cows in this program. Then we want to enter our dry cow ration group. And we also only have one ration for our dry cows. You could split the dry cows up between far off and pre-fresh if you would like. Then we are going to come in and look at the ingredients in all of the rations that we feed to all of our animals. We have split out the feed ingredients by whether they are home raised ingredients or entirely purchased ingredients. We have also split out the ingredients based on whether they are forages or concentrates. Here we are going to start off by listing all of the home raised forages in our ration. The list that you have to choose from is included from a Penn State summary of forage analysis. We are going to choose corn silage on an average analysis. There are many options to choose from when you consider grasses and alfalfa information as well as pastures. The most important information is that we choose the correct name. Here we are going to add an alfalfa haylage. We follow the information to legume silage. All of the rest of the information on nutrition data is not as important for this scenario. 
We are mostly concerned to find the correct market price for this information. Market prices are derived using a formula developed at Penn State. We are also going to add in a small grain silage, a grass hay, and an alfalfa hay. Once we have found all of the different ingredients, we will move down to home raised concentrates. These include things like corn and soybeans. Here we are going to feed a dry shelled corn and some roasted soybeans. We want to define what type of ingredient this is. In this case, both of these ingredients are concentrate grains. Now we will scroll down to the portion of the ingredients that are entirely purchased. We are going to feed to the milking cows a purchase complete feed. This would be a concentrate mix. Here we are going to enter the market price or the price you are going to pay as a producer for this ingredient. As you can see we have two columns, the market price per ton and the farm blend price per ton. For these home raised feeds we are going to compare the market price to the farm blend price. The farm blend price is the price that it actually costs you as a producer to raise and grow and harvest and store all of these forages and feeds and grains. When it comes to the purchase feeds, we are going to use the market price that you are currently paying to compare and to develop a price per for the ration. Once we have entered any complete feeds, we are going to list our ingredients separately for the rest of the rations. In this case, we are going to feed some canola meal, cotton seed, a dry cow mix, as well as milk replacer, calf starter, and a calf grower. Here we want to define what each forage is. If you have any questions on how we are defining each of the ingredients, you can come up here and select feed type guide. This will bring up a prompt that helps you define where each feed type is listed. When you are ready, you can just click on that to close it. Once you have defined all of the different feeds, you will come in and enter the prices for each ingredient here on the right. Remember to enter in both the market and the feed price columns. You may have to do some calculations as each of these prices are in dollars per ton. So for instance, you may have to figure out how much a bag of milk replacer costs on a per ton basis. Once you have entered all of the prices for each ingredient in all of the rations that you are using, it is now time to enter in the actual ration for each group of animals. We want to enter the rations on an as-fed basis as this is how we purchase and feed the cows. We are going to feed 52 pounds of corn silage, 23.7 pounds of alfalfa haylage, some corn, soybeans, our complete feed, as well as some canola meal and cotton seed. Once we have entered our milking cow rations, we will move on to the dry cows. and then we will turn to our heifers. Scroll to the right to access the heifers on our ration table. We want to include every age group of, ration, of heifers as they are grouped on your farm. In this case we have calves on milk, mean calves, calves ages two and a half months to breeding age, breeding age heifers, bred heifers, 
and our spray numbers. Then we want to include how many animals we have in each group. We want to make sure that these av animal numbers are the averages for the whole year. Therefore, if you live on a smaller farm, you may only have two calves on milk at one time, or in the spring you might have eight calves on milk. We want to take the average of that number rather than try and come up with a skewed sample. This will help determine how much feed overall we are using on a yearly basis. Then we want to come in and add the feed ingredients to each one of these rations. This is often the most difficult since there are no formal rations for some of these younger groups. Here, each calf on milk will receive one pound of milk replacer a day. For the calf starter, we want to take an average from the time the calf enters the group to the time she leaves the group. A calf on milk may not eat any calf starter when she is born, but by the time she is weaned, she may eat as much as five pounds. We want to take the average of that over the whole age of the calf during that time period. If you have any horses, you can add them here on the column on the right. Make sure to include the forages or concentrates that are fed to these horses in the list here on the left. Now you are finished entering all of the rations for your dairy farm. We are going to move on to determine the crop costs for our home raised feeds that will show up now in the farm blend price per ton. To do this, we will move on to the determine crop costs section of the spreadsheet.